Elon Musk fills us in on what exactly went wrong during Starship's last static fire. The first official mission on a Falcon 9 rocket takes flight. More launches are scheduled this weekend and on the same day. Rocket Lab is today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Last week, Starship SN8 underwent its third static fire test down in Boca Chica, Texas. But as many of you already know, the vehicle experienced some problems. One was a loss of control over the pneumatic system, the other related to one of the ship's Raptor engines. Well, this week, Elon, in his much appreciated transparent demeanor, informed us that about two seconds after starting the engines, the Marktite coating the concrete pad shattered, sending blades of hardened rock into the engine bay of SN32 and one rock blade severed an avionics cable, causing a bad shutdown. To remedy the problem, engineers are placing said cables in steel pipes and adding water-cooled steel pipes to the test pad. The annual Starship presentation for 2020 is to be replaced with an online article on SpaceX's website. But because of data collected from this last test, the article will have to wait. Maybe making some notable changes to Starship will wait until the figurative and literal dust settles. I can't remember the last time Cameron County's webpage looked so desolate. It's, it's kind of sad, okay? But keep your chin up, Kevin. The timeline is still moving forward. Raptor 32 was removed from SN8 on Saturday, and its replacement, SN46, was installed this week. So we may not have to wait too long for another test as we progress toward the 15-click flight. And of course, work continues on the subsequent Starship serial numbers. SN9 has been removed from the high bay. It was then lifted, its legs extended, and then placed back on the ground. The rocket awaits its upper half, which has received both of its fins, but moving it outside also provided some room in the high bay to work on BN1, the first super heavy booster, currently undergoing its own growth spurt. Also this week, parts for SN15 have now been spotted lounging around the Starship shipyard. The future is foreshadowing itself, invading the present, if you will, and it's awesome. Colonizing Mars requires the cost for space access to decrease dramatically. Enter SpaceX in their efforts to build this massive and 100% reusable vehicle. The projected cost per Starship Super Heavy launch will be less than 1 million for more than 100 tons to orbit, so it's mostly about fixed costs divided by launches per year. Starship is extreme overkill for mere Earth sector activity, which it will also do. The Starship fleet mass to orbit per year will be more than 1,000 times all current Earth rockets combined, including their own Falcon rockets, necessary for a city on Mars. That city, at least in our lifetime, won't be like any city here on Earth. Think Martian snow globes. Terraforming the red planet into a green and blue one will be too slow to allow otherwise anytime soon. However, Elon is confident that we can establish a human base there in our lifetime. It's funny how we long to visit the desolate red planet, and yet I have little doubt that the first person born on Mars will long to visit our blue marble. What? I didn't do anything. All right, moving on, let's debrief this week's crewed launch. On Sunday afternoon, the four passengers of Crew-1 prepared themselves to fly to the nest in a Dragon capsule upon a Falcon 9 rocket. And while this was the second manned flight for SpaceX and NASA, it was the first official manned mission. Elon was sidelined by NASA and had to monitor the event from afar because he had and had not COVID. So Gwen Shotwell was there to fill in for him. And like belated trick-or-treaters, the four astronauts dressed in cosplay LARP their way through NASA's gauntlet of traditions and reach the coveted boomstick of wonders. In regular life, I'm just Jonathan, but here I am a very high level paladin. Meatballs were signed, seats were taken, then elevated, the ninjas closed the hatch, and puff went the magic dragon. And resilience rises. Not even gravity contains humanity when we explore as one for all. The booster landed on the drone ship. Yesterday, it returned to port looking a little tipsy, like a drunken sailor, or maybe just seasick. I guess the landing was harder than it looked. One of the legs was compressed, but Elon responded that they will be changing out a few parts, otherwise it's fine. But anyway, the crew in their capsule made orbit, and it was reported shortly after that the TCS, or thermal control system pumps, registered pressure spikes. So Dragon switched on its backup pump. Okay, it looks like during activation, Loop Alpha had a pressure spike, which caused Fitter to trip and fill over to Loop Bravo. Uh, however, we, we do believe that Loop Alpha is healthy, and we're troubleshooting to understand, uh, you know, what our plan to recovery is. However, we would go for the burn in the current TCS configuration. Okay, yeah, I'll try to 
Also, three of four heaters that are used to warm the capsule's maneuvering propellant were disabled. And we are also uh, still assessing cabin environment and I expect to give you some more words on that shortly for seat offing. SpaceX was able to right all wrongs with the systems, and so the crew continued onward through their 27-hour coast to the space station. The force was with them, because Baby Yoda was their zero-g indicator for this mission. And just like in the movies, he wasn't really pulling his own weight. The next day, Dragon rendezvoused with the nest and proceeded to autonomously dock. Thereafter, the space station crew welcomed their floating bodies with open arms. It is not over. Uh, this was a beautiful launch, and we are all very excited about the launch. But remember, this is a this is a six month mission, um, and it's the first of many. Ah oh, man, we gotta wait six months for some shoot action, and this November launch manifest isn't yet over. Saturday, the 21st, is the West Coast launch of Sentinel-6 at 12:17 p.m. Eastern. And then if the schedule holds, Falcon 9 will lift off with its 16th flock of Starlink satellites that very evening at 10.17 p.m. Before we head into today's honorable mention, I want to first quickly announce that we have new eccentric merch available in our store. You can order yours using the Teespring link in the description below. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Last night, Rocket Lab launched their 16th mission for the Electron rocket, Return to Sender carrying 30 satellites for their rideshare customers. What made this launch so special, however, was that this was their first attempt at recovering a booster on their path to reusability. After stage separation, the first stage re-entered the atmosphere and popped the drogue chute prior to deploying its main, and then splashing down in the ocean for pickup. The end goal is to ultimately catch one under canopy using a skyhook. If you'd like to learn more about their efforts, you can check out my documentary on the subject of rocket parachutes or my full interview with Rocket Lab CEO, Peter Beck, both linked at the end of this video. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I'd like to thank my eccentric members and patrons for supporting our efforts to bring good SpaceX tidings to the world. You too can join the fam and receive more content by visiting the links in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to support local SpaceX contributors. Have a nominal evening. See you tomorrow. And until that time, Godspeed.